Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John. This report is for the 18th of August. Well, you can see we finally had the magenta dip below, which gave us a little bit of softness, not a terrible amount because we also had the fade off of the white MBI. Uh, if that had accelerated, then we would have seen a stronger move. We're still cyan under red. The cross of the steel coming below fully resets those short-term buyers. So from that standpoint, as this fade uh, you know, eases off, uh, we basically tried to fill back a positive extreme from right here. Haven't even hit the first couple, so there's still plenty extra that was in within that. So we'll see if it's able to uh, continue. But as far as this looks, uh, short's still not active enough. Uh, it's mostly just uh, buyers uh, losing a little momentum. Barring any you know special news, that's probably likely to stay the same in this particular case because we're not getting a significant spike turnaround yet of uh, DOC cyan here, which will be shorts activating, and that's going to be necessary to create the DOC spread like here that begins any kind of downfall. So we have some time on that one. Certainly, we're going to see it from both 5K and then 50K uh, prior to it happening. Euro still, they're keeping it right at that 23% uh, for now and uh, just barely holding on. Again, you know, they've had these threshold moments of 104 range that breaks below create these kind of major downdrafts, which led to that ultimate uh, break of uh, parity. And uh, now it looks like they're trying to defend this uh, 101.5 area. Uh, as another key defense, and if that doesn't hold, then the problem is, is that below this uh, parity level, um, it can become uh, much more of a momentum move, and you know, low 90s would definitely be in reach, particularly if things really sour, and the U.S. Uh, economy doesn't look like it's going to falter at all. Uh, then you would have an exacerbation of it uh, moving forward. Looking into uh, gold at this particular point, slight fade off on gold in this particular case uh, going on through here. And it's mostly because of the market uh, slide, but this is that battle between the idea of whether or not uh, there's true softening going on or if it's just uh, an aberration, as the Fed says. If the Fed is going to continue to tighten, no place for gold to go. Uh, it still looks to be a higher situation because we're not ending inflation anytime soon. Uh, fine, yes, you've had an easing from the peak of oil prices, but all that does is uh, reduce the rate. It doesn't change the fact that elevated prices are not really coming down. The only thing that's really changing is uh, some energy prices in a modest uh, way as far as gasoline. That does free up some extra money, which you know could help as far as a soft landing goes. Um, you just have to watch if there's any spike that uh, develops through uh, geopolitical tensions or whatever that would throw uh, things into a little bit of an unknown. But it, as it stands now, um, so far the potential for a soft landing is increasing uh, significantly. Uh, we did see the manufacturing numbers came out; they were horrible in that. But then you're talking about you know moving into the first quarter of next year uh, for the difficulties, and so uh, you know that could be baking in. Uh, a, a deeper recession construct uh, if that doesn't change uh, pretty quickly. Uh, treasuries, as we talked about, expectation would be that TLT would head lower and uh, rates would rise, and there's still no change in that prospect. Um, though there was uh, the question will be, you know, in the Fed minutes, are there more people uh, warning about being too aggressive with their tightening and that? Uh, did they let it wait a little bit longer, which would be the most prudent situation before, you know? Uh, accelerating, except for when you start seeing what's happening still in other areas that they don't really put in their statistics as far as food and things like that, that really indicate that uh, inflation has not really abated for what people really have to pay for. Uh, from a Bitcoin, and there's the daily, uh, just to point out that despite some of the recent uh, significant moves, we're, we're still right at the same algo level that uh, has been consistent from quite some time ago. and. Uh, it's not looking particularly bullish from a daily standpoint. Intraday, it's been all over the map. ETH, on the other hand, was beautiful because you had this nice run up, all these positive extremes. Literally, the cell comes in, fills that all back, and then just uh, glide carries all the way through it, uh, only to catch a 
brief short bounce back up before doing exactly the same thing, creating what effectively, from a broad sense here, uh, because of the 5,000 tick chart, looks like a nice compressed double bottom. Larger time frame, probably wouldn't even notice uh, that that took place. And then literally just finished right out at that 50%. Uh, but again, super clean. Uh, love that from uh, the algo standpoint. Uh, from a uh, 50K standpoint, short signal came in, took that one, bought long, uh, closed that one out, and then flipped back to the short side. Uh, once that peak got hit, we ended up with this significant white lead. Uh, it was pretty clear at that point. It was just a matter of waiting for the uh, beginning of the breakdown. Clean DOC spread right there. Um, just was a little uh, slow in the reaction. We forget the first indications when you had the steel crossing below. Orange in this particular case. And then the pivot up of uh, cyan called for the end. It's usually where I'm ending longs and literally waiting to see if I've got a breakdown that uh, follows through before attacking to the short side. But... It did, in fact, do that. And from a 5K, you can see it from the beginning of the day. Beautiful and clean all the way down. Literally supporting right on that previous algo. We had a 42.65 range. Did a couple little bounces, went right back to it. Then the brief swoop below to the other algo at 42.57, where it caught some action at that particular stage and started to move up. And it's what I look for in this particular case, I mean, we started off the day with a lot of MBI white leading, and you can see that we ended up with so many of the MBI white spikes um, that the bias in that particular case, you could tell, was uh, about filling those back in. And then we get this late, later one right here that uh, precursored uh, this rise because we had that immediate uh, magenta pop back up and strong DOC red, um, which is another thing I always look at too when uh, seeing some of these big runs, do I start to see the beginning of a rollover in that DOC red? Because that usually is how that happens, particularly uh, like in this case over here, uh, coming from the uh, below seven, comes up to the zero and then fades below the zero. It, the, those are usually pretty negative situations, the breaking of that zero level. Uh, and so I always look for it, especially when we get uh, well past them because it gets beyond uh, uh, normalized area and just shows that uh, we've reached a fever pitch, so to speak. I mean, they can be extended, but usually this is what we look for. And the cleanest ones are always these where you get this beautiful um, DOC spread mixed with the uh, break of the MBI magenta below the 25. And literally, though, came back all the way to fill even from this takeoff point this white MBI lead, which suggested a return back to the 0%. And in fact, not only did the 0% uh, right on the money, and that happened all the way now into pre-market. So this is where I've always said that the, the timing that we have with necessarily the market is not the same timing that computers have because they know they can execute this uh, uh, over time and within uh, soft periods uh, in between changes of exchanges to Asia or Europe. Um, gives them a lot of uh, wiggle room, so to speak. But needless to say, uh, beautifully depicted ahead of time for us in the readings, and then it's just a matter of waiting for it to transpire. So that's the long and short of it. As always, I will continue to update you on the Skype chat. Trade well.